in this lecture we will discuss the notion of a subspace so what is a subspace it is essentially a non empty subset taken from a vector space which satisfies certain properties the formal definition of a subspace is as follows consider a vector space v over the field over a field f okay a non empty subset m of the vector space v is said to be a subspace if for every pair of vectors let's label them as x and y contained in the set m the linear combination of these two vectors alpha x plus beta y where alpha beta belong to the field is also contained in f okay so let's see this clearly first of all anything to qualify as a subset a subspace it has to be a non empty subset of the vector space so consider some subset non empty subset of this vector space v let us label this subset as m now you take two vectors which are in this particular set m okay let's say you take the vector x and vector y and these two vectors are taken from m of course these vectors x and y belong to the vector space v because m is a subset of v now do this you take a linear combination of these two vectors so when we take linear combinations the scalars always come from the field okay So alpha beta are from the field use these to have a linear combination of x and y and if and you if you see that this linear combination of x and y also belongs to m and this fact is true for any alpha beta that you take from the field and for any pair of x and y that you take from m for in not in fact for any pair so every pair of x and y that you take from m and for every pair of alpha beta that you take from this field the linear combination that you get which is alpha x plus beta y could also be in the same set if this is true then this says that m is a subspace of v of course the field associated remains the same because the field is associated with the vector space and hence this also is attached to the subspace as well we consider a few examples
consider us vector space r2 defined with the field of reals or let's keep it general consider a vector space given by rn with the field being reals now consider a subset i should write it like this so consider a subset m m is defined as vector v belonging to this vector space where v is equal to that alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n with alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 all the way equal to alpha n alpha i is belonging to r and so if we let us label this as r basically m is a collection of vectors whose of those vectors whose all the tuples are equal okay you can have vectors uh, which are all ones 1111 or 2222 or 5555 or 0000 and so on okay now let us check if the condition that the linear combination of every pair of vector in m hold uh, belongs to the set m or not so what you do is take up a vector and let's label that as x and x is let's say alpha 1 till alpha 1 so all of them are same and this is n tuples similarly let's take another vector represent it as y and let's say this this is all beta ones okay now consider two scalars from the field i'm calling them scalars because they are used in the scaling of these vectors what do we get for alpha x and beta y the same as alpha multiplied by alpha 1 and throughout all the tuples plus beta multiplied by beta 1 Throughout all the tuples for y. When you add them up, you get alpha alpha one plus beta beta one for all the tuples. And from the definition of M, this linear combination also belongs to M. Now note that we did not take any specific choice of x and y. This x and y satisfy the general structure that is supposed to be possessed by a vector to be a part of the set m and alpha beta are some randomly chosen um, scalars from the underlying field and in this case our field is essentially the set of real numbers and when we took a linear combination of x and y so basically you take any linear combination of this x and y the resulting vector also has the structure that is needed by a vector to be part of m so it belongs to m this is going to hold for any x and y that you take any x and y okay so for any x and y in m this is going to hold so m which was constructed to be a subset of v because it satisfies the web property it is also a subspace m is a subspace of v will the zero element be a part of the subspace and the answer is yes okay the zero vector is also a part of the subspace m m because the 
scalars alpha and beta can very well be chosen to be zero so that the linear combination gives you a zero vector so zero vector is always a part of the subspace m consider a vector space which is a set of let's say n cross n real matrices with the field p reals and let's take define a set m as that it is a collection of n cross n real matrices where a is equal to a transpose right basically it is a set of symmetric matrices so of course m by definition is a subset of v is m a subspace so to verify this again we will take a vector x in m so the vector x here is nothing but a n cross n real matrix which will satisfy the property that x is equal to x transpose similarly we will consider another vector y in m such that y is y transpose now you can see that for all alpha beta belonging to the field which is the set of real numbers here alpha x plus beta y will this be in m how do you verify this so what you do is you test whether alpha x plus beta y is going to be a symmetric matrix or not. So to do this, take a transpose. Essentially, alpha x transpose plus beta y transpose, which is same as alpha x transpose plus beta y transpose. And by the choice of x and y from the set M, alpha x transpose is equal to x and y transpose is equal to y so what we have is alpha x plus beta y so what you end up showing is alpha x plus beta y the matrix that you generated is equal to its transpose which essentially indicates that alpha x plus beta y belongs to m for all alpha beta taken from the field and this is true for all x, y that you, for every pair of x and y that you take in M. Because when we chose the x, y here, we do not associate any specific structure to x and y except for the fact that x belongs to M and y belongs to M. Okay, so this establishes that M. is a subspace of V. Let's consider another example. V is a set of polynomials of degree 2. Set of polynomials with real coefficients of degree 2 o and defined over the field of reals. Now consider a set M x of t in p2 such that x of t is equal to x of minus t. So these are polynomials in t. Okay. Basically m is a set of even polynomials and of course this is a subset of the vector space that now take any vector in m so it will satisfy this. In fact, when I say x belonging to M, I should not write such that because it is anyways true. Let's see. Yeah. yeah the place that I had used. So if x belongs to M, then x of t will be x of minus t. Similarly, take a vector 
y belonging to m so in this case y of t will be equal to y of minus t this is coming from the definition of the set m now for all alpha beta the question is will alpha x plus beta y belong to the set m so let's see this alpha x of so the polynomial that you generate out of the linear combination is this okay now let us label this as v of t so what is v of minus t is equal to alpha multiplied by x of minus t plus delta multiplied by y of minus t and this is nothing but equal to alpha x of t plus beta y of t this is coming from the definition of m and the fact that x and y are vectors belonging to the set m and this is nothing but equal to v of t so what we have is v of t to be equal to v of minus t so v belongs to the set m and v is a linear combination of x and y it is true for every set of x y that you choose uh, every pair of set uh, pair of x y that you choose from the set m okay and hence you actually have shown that m is a subspace of the vector space p2 Of course, this is over the field F, and here we have considered the field to be set of fields. In all the three examples, you should note that the zero vector of the vector space is also an element of the subspace. Why? Because as I just explained, as I had explained uh, a few moments back, uh, alpha and beta are any element that you can take from the field. so they can be zero as well okay and similarly x and y can be any vector from m so when you choose x y they might be linearly dependent on each other so you can find a non zero set of alpha and beta so that alpha is plus beta y gives you a zero vector okay and we say that any combination of any pair of uh, vectors x and y taken from m should also be in m. Okay, so zero vectors are always in the subspace. Okay, so if you, uh, what is the intersection of a subspace with respect to a vector and a vector space? It's the subspace itself. Okay. Now there are two trivial subspaces. The two trivial subspaces that you always have associated with the vector space is the subspace or the zero subspace uh, i am labeling that that with o it contains only the zero vector of the vector space and the other is the vector space itself so these are the two trivial subspaces that any vector space that you think of will always have associated with it let's say that you have some or let us put this put it let us let us put it like this consider a vector space v over a field f let mi b a subspace of v for i equal to 1 to n so i am considering n number of 
subspaces of the vector space V. There are two questions that I am putting you, putting for you. The first question is, the first question is, is the intersection of all the subspaces is a subspace of V or not? The second question is, is the union of all these subspaces is a subspace of V or not? Please try to answer uh, these two uh, questions. So what you have to essentially do is you have to identify take any two vectors from the sets basically the, which is defined by the intersection here and then so that the linear combination of the vectors will always belong to this intersection. If that is true then it is a subspace. Similarly you can also try to check whether the union is also a subspace or not. You take any two vectors from this union and try to prove or try to see whether the linear combination will lie in this end or not. Now similar to the idea of basis that we had associated with the vector space, we also have the idea of basis and hence the notion of dimension associated with the subspace. Okay. So, the basis of a subspace, the basis of a subspace M is the set of linearly independent vectors that is denoted by this such that M is spanned by this set of the basis of a subspace M is the set of linearly independent vectors denoted by XM such that M is a span of this XM. Okay. Again, as a basis uh, 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 similar to a vector space not having a unique basis associated with it, a subspace also does not have a unique uh, basis associated. However, the dimension of the subspace is unique to the given subspace. So, the dimension of the subspace M is equal to the cardinality of the basis. Same as the way you have defined the dimension of the vector space. Dimension of a vector space is the cardinality of the vector space. Dimension of a subspace is the cardinality of the basis for the subspace. Okay. Dimension of the vector space. Oh, I take back. I Dimension of the vector space is basically the cardinality of the basis associated with the vector space. Similarly, dimension of the subspace is the cardinality of the basis associated with the subspace. Okay. Now, when we do this, please do remember that the field associated of for a subspace the field that you would consider for a subspace is same as the field of a vector space okay also, the 
the dimension of n is always less than equal to the dimension of the vector space. So the dimension of a subspace is always less than equal to the dimension of a vector space. given an M dimensional subspace of an N dimensional vector space we can find a basis x1 x2 till xm xn plus 1 till xn in V so that the first m vectors of this basis, the first m vectors of this basis from the basis for the subspace. Let us take a, uh, uh, let's see some more examples of subspace. So, what are the examples that we have seen for subspace? One is the set of even polynomials being a subspace of a set of polynomials of degree 2. Next is, we saw example where uh, you have a vector space of n cross n real matrices and a set of symmetric matrices, a subset of this n cross n matrix space is also a subspace. We also saw that uh, for a set of vectors where all the tuples are equal, it's a subspace of the vector space Rn. For all of them, we have considered the field to be a set of real numbers. So they are all real vector spaces. Now, if you want to look at in terms of um, figures or graphs, then if you consider the R2 space is the x-axis which is a subspace or the y-axis which is a subspace. So you have this as the subspace of R2, you have this as the subspace of R2. Okay, similarly, you have a straight line passing through the origin to be a subspace of R2. It can be any straight line that passes through the origin, it will be a subspace of R2. Similarly, in three dimension. Any plane that passes through the origin or any line that passes through the origin will be a subspace of R3. When I say three dimensional space, I am basically talking of R3. So, in R3, any plane passing through the origin or any line passing through the origin is a subspace of R3. Of course, the origin, the set which contains the origin only and the entire um, R three space are trivial subspaces of R three. Okay. So now we'll further examine this um, examples that we had um, considered for the subspace. The first example that we had taken was 
the vector space this where m was defined such that v belongs to rn with v equal to alpha until alpha n where all the tuples are equal with alpha is belonging to real space this is what m was and we could prove that m is a subspace of v m is a prove that m is we could prove that m is a subspace of v in this case okay now consider a set it just has this one vector where everything is one any element in m you take any element in m you can represent this as some scalar multiplied by multiplied to this uh vector that is in xm which implies that x belongs to span of xm this implies that m is a subset of a span of xm similarly you can also show that every vector in the span of xm belongs to m and hence it is a subset of this vector uh, subspace m and this together establishes that m is essentially the span of the set xm and xm has just one vector associated with it so the dimension of m is 1 and xm is one of the bases that you have similarly if you consider the second example or rather i think this was the third example we defined m as a set of polynomials with degree 2 such that x of t is x of minus t basically m was a set of even polynomials that we had and we also showed that m is a subspace consider a set which consists of the vectors 1 and t square you can show that m is equal to the span of xm here also this is a linearly independent set so set of vectors which is basically uh, which are basically linearly independent so xm is a basis of m and hence the dimension of this subspace is as i said the cardinality of the basis which is 2 what was the dimension of the vector space here the dimension of the vector space is 3 so you notice that this is 
less than the dimension of vector space, which is Consider the example of two cross two real matrices. The field being reals, and let us consider the subset, which is basically a set of two cross two symmetric matrices. We establish that this is. a uh, subspace of v if you consider a set which is which is of this form and you can show that m is equal to the span of the set xm also this is a set of linearly independent vectors so xm forms the basis of m and the dimension of m is nothing but the cardinality of the basis and in this case this is 3 which of course is less than the dimension of the vector space itself which is 4 so try to take up um, other examples uh, of vector spaces and try to uh, see Uh, define a subset in the vector space and check whether it's a subspace or not. If it's a subspace, try to find a basis associated with the subspace and hence the dimension of the subspace itself. Okay. I'll make one more statement before I uh, conclude this. consider a vector space v over a field f let xm uh, let x consisting of this n vectors from the vector space v let this be a basis of v let xm or rather let me label this as x dash be a subset of x this is any subset that you consider of x the span of this subset is a subspace of v and dimension of this subspace form is equal to the cardinality of the subset x dash so if i consider the vector space the set of set two degree polynomials second degree polynomials or polynomials of degree 2 along with the field r i and let me choose the basis as 1 t and t square 
so the span of one t or if you consider the span of one t square or the span of t t square these are all examples of subspaces of v okay there are many more subspaces that you can actually form out of this but these are some examples of subspaces of so if you want to construct some subspaces find a basis of the vector space and take a subset of this basis you find the span of this subset that span is essentially a subspace of v uh, we'll stop here thank you